Simon Barnes had a stable life. He was married to Amanda and was a construction supervisor. He had worked hard since he was young, starting as an assistant, and thanks to his effort and dedication, he managed to reach the position he was in. The family did not have many luxuries, but they were able to afford a popular car and Simon ensured the family's sustenance. Simon and Amanda were the parents of eight-year-old twins Melanie and Emmy and five-year-old Arnold. Since having the twins, Amanda chose not to work and be a stay-at-home mom, which was not a problem since the couple had an agreement. However, for the past year, Amanda has been behaving strangely, spending excessively on frivolous things like salons and clothes. Simon liked to see his wife looking beautiful and did not mind at first, but things started getting more and more exaggerated. One day Simon said, Love, you bought new clothes three months in a row with our card. I like seeing you beautiful, but I think you should slow down. I am the only one working, and we are exceeding our monthly budget. You don't have to stop buying things for yourself, just hold back a bit so we don't go over the limit like last month, the husband said carefully. Amanda did not understand the situation and raged against her husband, Simon, if you're not earning enough, get a second job or find a way to get a raise. I take care of this house, the kids, and the least I deserve is to take care of myself a little, she said. I know, but right now, I am not able to. What if we put the kids in daycare, and you could also get a job? I think we could have a slightly better purchasing power, Simon said, trying to be understanding. What? Never. Since the girls were born, our agreement was that I would stay at home taking care of everything, and you would take care of bringing in money. If you can't fulfill the agreement, it's your problem, Amanda replied. Simon was saddened after that conversation. He expected at least some understanding from his wife. After all, he did everything for her and their children. The problem was that Amanda started taking care of the house less and less, and many times after working until late, Simon had to make his own food. This led to countless fights between the couple and left the family very damaged. One day, Simon had an accident at the construction site, falling from a considerable height. He underwent surgery, and in the end, he was diagnosed with having to spend some time in a wheelchair and would probably limp forever. The man was devastated by the decision because, in addition to not being able to work, he would still need care, but the worst was yet to come. When Simon finally came home after spending weeks in the hospital, he found a letter from Amanda that said, Simon, unfortunately, I no longer love you. I've been having an affair with another man for a year. He gives me everything I want, and I no longer have to live in all this poverty. And now, with you disabled, I'm not going to stay. I'm leaving and not taking the kids. Simon's world collapsed. He didn't know what to do. He called his mother, who was with the children, and just cried. Simon's mother, Edith, immediately went to his house to comfort him. The children did not quite understand what was happening but missed their mother very much. Simon did not have much time to grieve, he needed to be strong since he had to take care of the children. Simon gave his all during physiotherapy so he could quickly regain his movements and soon managed to walk with the help of a crutch. He soon started looking for work, but unfortunately, he wouldn't be able to work in construction again due to his limp. The only job Simon managed to get was as a dishwasher in a renowned restaurant in the city. Simon worked hard at his new job, but the problem was that he now earned five times less than before and struggled to support his family. One year passed and things got much worse. The household bills were tight. The children could no longer have new clothes and buying food was difficult. Most of Simon's salary went only towards buying food and to make matters worse, 
In the meantime, Saman's mother became ill and needed to move in with her son. The young man had already recovered from his injury and could now walk without crutches, but he still limped and therefore it was very difficult to get a better job. Saman didn't know what to do anymore. The food in the house was already scarce and so the young man was thin, trying to give the little food he had to his mother and children until one day he noticed something that caught his attention. Many untouched plates were thrown away either because the customers didn't eat or because there was leftover food. As it was a high-end restaurant, the customers were very demanding and the quality control was strict, so if a dish was outside the standards, it was immediately discarded to be thrown away. Suddenly, Saman had a dialogue with himself. What if I took this leftover food home? It's good and it will be thrown away. Wow, but just over a year ago, I supported my house and my children had everything they needed and now I've come to the point of having to take leftovers. Well, I don't have much of an option. If not this, what will my children eat? He thought. Despite all the shame, the next day Saman brought a container to the restaurant so he could take the food home. He took it and the children and his mother were happy. There was roast beef, steak, salmon, mashed potatoes. All very delicious. The family hadn't had meat in a long time, so Saman decided to continue. The next day, he brought two containers and did so every day, and the food was always very good, and sometimes even had dessert. To think that all this food would go to waste, Saman thought. After three months of bringing food from the restaurant home, Saman was able to alleviate his financial life. He hardly spent money on gas and food and was able to buy new school uniforms for the children, better school supplies, and the young man was happy because somehow he was able to support his family. Saman's boss, Mr. Rocco Grimes, didn't mind that he took leftover food home. He thought Saman was taking it for a dog or something and never knew the true reason behind the dishwasher's actions. The problem is that Saman didn't have peace for long. Sometime later, Amanda reappeared. She was married to a wealthy man and wanted custody of the children. Saman didn't want the woman who left without even thinking about their children to now take his children. So he sought out a lawyer. Rebecca Burnett was a family lawyer and promised to help the young man not lose custody of his children. It would be very difficult. After all, Amanda was a mother and now she had better financial conditions, but she had abandoned the children which counted heavily against her. Rebecca visited Saman's house to discuss the case and noticed several containers of food from the restaurant on his table. At that moment she understood what was happening, but decided not to say anything for fear that Saman would feel offended. In another place not too far away, Naomi Clark arrived home and poured herself a glass of wine. She had had an exhausting day managing the Clark Gourmet restaurant. She had recently inherited the restaurant from her parents. She had a law degree but ended up abandoning the profession when her parents died in a terrible accident and she was forced to take care of everything. The restaurant had a chef named Rocco Grimes. He was her father's trusted man and ran the kitchen while she managed all the finances. After relaxing for a bit, the doorbell rang. Who could it be at this hour? The businesswoman wondered. When she opened the door, it was Rebecca Burnett, her college friend. They were great friends and talked about everything. Friend, what a surprise. What brings you here? Naomi asked. Naomi, I'm sorry for coming unannounced, but I just found out something that I needed to tell you, and it's urgent, said the lawyer. Urgent? What could be so urgent, Rebecca? Naomi asked. Do you have an employee named Samon Barnes? I do. He's a kitchen assistant and works washing dishes. He even occupies our vacancy for disabled people. He limps on one leg, 
but I don't know much about him. It's mostly Rocco who takes care of the employees. Why? Naomi said. Naomi, did you know that he takes the restaurant leftovers home? Rebecca asked. I know, Rocco mentioned it to me once. I think he has three dogs, right? Naomi said confused. No, friend, he doesn't have dogs. He has three children, and it's him, the three little kids, and his sick mother who eat the leftovers he takes home, Rebecca told Naomi the whole story of Simon, and at the end, the restaurant owner was shocked. Immediately, she called Rocco and asked him to come to her house. Rocco, what's this story about Simon, our employee, taking leftover food home? Naomi asked. Naomi, I was mentioning it to you some time ago. He has some pets, I think, something like that, Rocco replied, confused. No, Rocco, he doesn't have pets. He and his family are the ones eating the leftover food, Naomi said. Rocco was shocked, as he did not imagine that his colleague was in such need. After that, Naomi took action, and the next day, before Simon started his shift, she went to his house and knocked on the door. Simon was surprised to see his boss. Mrs. Clark, is something wrong? Did I do something wrong? Simon asked. Relax, Simon. I just came here to give you this, Naomi said. Naomi handed an envelope to Simon and he was shocked to see that it contained an amount equivalent to 10 times his salary. But Naomi, what is this for? Simon asked. It's for you, Simon. I know the situation you're going through and that you've been bringing food home. I never thought I would live so well while one of my employees is struggling. Please accept it. It's for you to get your life in order, his boss replied. Simon was extremely grateful to the businesswoman for her kindness and generosity. He invited her in for some tea and biscuits with Mrs. Barnes and the children. Naomi was friends with a doctor who was specializing in and developing a study on cases like Simon's. She paid for his treatment, and in a few months, he had a surgery that allowed him to walk again. After some time, he was finally able to work again as a supervisor in construction. The friendship between Naomi and Simon grew stronger every day, and from this friendship, a relationship developed. Naomi loved the children, and they liked their stepmother. After two years, they got married, and everyone was very happy to finally have a maternal figure in the house. Thanks to Naomi's help, Simon was also able to open his own construction company at that time. He didn't want to take advantage of her money, but she insisted and had a percentage in the company. Simon thanked God every day for putting someone as special as Naomi in his life, someone who did good for him and his children and helped him get out of the slump they were in. In addition to everything, the couple developed a social project for a popular restaurant where garbage pickers, homeless people, and low-income people could eat for a very low price. Waste stopped happening in the restaurant, as Naomi did not allow it because now she knew that even though she lived well, someone next to her could be in need. And what about Amanda? The woman simply freaked out. She began to stalk Simon with threats and even tried to kidnap the children one day after school and take them out of the country. Fortunately, Simon discovered the plan before it was carried out. With this, it was not difficult for Simon to get custody of the children and even obtain a protective measure for him and the children against his ex-wife. And what about you, my friends? What would you have done in Simon's place? Let me know in the comments because I want to know. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to stay up to date on all videos. See you in the next video.